Hey, we're here in the bike shop. I'm talking with Will Ritchie. We just got done testing the Zeroed, what is it, Taniwa? Is that how you say I, it? I think it's pronounced Tanifa, but so, yeah. not easy. It's a New Zealand brand using some German technology, the Pinion Gearbox. And this is something really special. We don't do this for every bike review, but there's kind of a lot going on here. I thought it was worth taking the time and talking about it. And this is my first time ever riding any kind of gearbox, but you've spent some time on, on roll-off hubs and... I've ridden roll-off a little bit, but this is definitely different than roll-off. Roll-off, we usually have the hub with mm -hmm. kind of all the gearing within the hub. Here, our internal gearing is located right at the bottom bracket area. Mm -hmm. And definitely, you need specific tabs on a frame in order to be able to accommodate the pinion. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that kind of differentiates the Zero. It's made specifically around this internally geared system the whole system kind of made my head spin. Like you spent some time talking to them about exactly what goes on. So like, I kind of want to get into exactly how that works. We're pedaling along, forces coming in from the input shaft where our cranks are bolted onto. It's then traveling through this first sub transmission, these spur gears right here. As we pedal along, force then moves out to the second sub transmission. These gears near the drive side, the outermost gears. It then transfers along this output shaft, which actually is on top of the input shaft, going to the chain ring, which is bolting to that output shaft. If the chain ring is moving more quickly, we're in a harder gear. If it's moving more slowly, we're in an easier gear. Shifting the pinion is a matter of this planetary gear changing direction, which is turning the camshaft, which is actually within the shifting shaft. As it turns it, different pawls flip up or flip down, which activate different spur gears, which then affect our first sub-transmission and second sub-transmission, creating our gear ratios. So all that is in a pretty compact package, all in one place, and it takes a lot of weight off of the rear wheel and that's kind of what excited me the most about this is this whole getting rid of unsprung weight meaning weight that doesn't have any suspension to support it it's on the ground it's hitting everything you're hitting like your cassette your derailleur the extra chain all that on a traditional bike is kind of affecting the suspension something we take for granted and after riding this i don't take it for granted anymore it's really a different feeling because Anything that you're kind of creeping or crawling over, regardless of speed, whether you're going really slow, mm -hmm. whether you're going super fast, it's a very sensitive feel to it, rather than the rear wheel and the suspension having to overcome kind of this inertia of mm -hmm. like what you talked about, cassette, derailleur, um, dropout, all that, um, and instead positioning it here. It's just much quicker kind of effect on the rear suspension. So it's that really sensitive kind of smooth feel to it that for me I really noticed the biggest change at low speeds mm -hmm. I'm kind of used to if I start to really creep my way down something there's almost a little bit of a lockout feel to mm -hmm. the rear suspension maybe not lockout maybe too aggressive of a word but it's on a, a traditional bit, bike you mean on a traditional yeah. full suspension bike it's kind of mm -hmm. a little bit harsher riding this it was super sensitive at really slow speeds. Mm -hmm. It was really incredible kind of the, the traction you gained at a speed that was so slow that normally you'd think you have to put your foot down mm -hmm. and normally it would kind of feel like something is chattering through it. With yeah. this zero, it, I didn't notice that. And then you noticed that high speeds. Yeah. Like, the effect. Yeah, it really kind of has this calming effect on the way the bike rides, like the, um, all those little bumps that maybe you kind of just used to feeling really just evens those things out. Big bumps, kind of everything is just is just softer. And a lot of that is the the less unsprung weight. A lot of it is also because of the more sprung weight. There's just more mass with the bike. So it kind of keeps it going in one direction. So it has this steady kind of feeling. And I'd kind of say for better or worse, like you, this is something that is really good for charging through rough stuff, but when I wanted to really play with it and jump it around, that that weight that was attached to the bike, like if I was pushing into a turn or pushing into a lip, it was like 
I had all this extra help, like pushing the bike down, and it kind of got a little bit boggy when I wanted to like pretend I was on a BMX bike, like I always do. And I, the nice thing is, is with a really tunable rear shock, you can dial up the, the low speed compression. And then I actually had to dial down the rebound damping to get it to feel a little bit more springy. And I kind of got it halfway there, but really that's not the nature of, of, uh, of, a, of, of a gearbox kind of a bike. I think it's really meant for being planted and being capable. And it's incredibly smooth, so it is that kind of supple feel through stuff. I noticed how low the weight felt. I also noticed it almost makes it feel like it's an even lower bottom bracket. Mm. All the weight centered, it's, it's down there. But like you, I did notice that kind of it's a steadier feel to it. Mm -hmm. It's not as much a poppy, playful bike. So that kind of goes in line with the little spec change that we made on it. I mean, out of the box, it comes with traditional high volume 2.4, 2.5 tires, and you got the idea to put some 2.8s on it. And that was kind of um, just thinking about the feel of it with a little bit more centralized mass. It kind of seemed like a bike that, you know, as we already talked about, it's really good at getting through stuff. If there was a little more tire to it, mm -hmm. it seemed like it would really play to the bike's strengths mm -hmm. and it would really be able to get through stuff, it would also kind of hold that kind of central mass mm -hmm. even more so. And I think that this bike is never going to be a sprinter. I mean, you don't really need ultra efficient, ultra light tires. I mean, we kind of noticed this isn't the kind of bike that you want to go out and try and hammer out as many laps as you can in the fading light. It's kind of more of like a long haul kind of a thing. Because really, if you, something about the gearbox is, if you try and push up hills in a high gear, there's kind of some noticeable drag in there. Something that kind of, you know, there is a little more feel to it. Didn't notice it in the easy gears. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of consistent with what we think this bike is going for. It's an all day backcountry. You don't want to have to worry about anything going wrong with your gears kind of a bike. And they nailed it on that, on that front. Yeah. You don't have to do any sort of maintenance here. You can go 10,000 kilometers, 6,000 miles without doing anything to the gear oil mm -hmm. in there. You don't have a derailleur you have to worry about. Mm -hmm. And you have quite a range of gearing. Low is really low. Mm -hmm. So for something bigger with varied descents, you really get the benefit of the suspension. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where the bike shines. Mm -hmm. So thanks for spending some time in the bike shop and look out for the full review on the Zero Tanifa. Tani, 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 Tani. There we go. Thanks for watching.